Matt Miller, Paul Sweeney here in the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio. I want to bring in our next guest because he traveled all the way from Newport Beach, California, David Bonson, CIO of the Bonson Group. All right, so David, I got the S&P up, I don't know, 17, 18%. I got NASDAQ up 32, 33%. I got the NASDAQ 100 up darn near 40%. Are we calling a tech bubble here? Well, a most, AI bubble, maybe, I don't know. Most certainly we're in a tech bubble if you are looking at valuations relative to history. Okay. And, and that premium to historical valuation calls for a, a mean reversion. Oh boy. And I think that that's inevitably going to happen. Right now, it's interesting. You have Apple and Microsoft below their 50 day moving average, and there are more energy names as a percentage of the index above their 200 day than, really? there, are, than there are tech names. Interesting. Well, we got W Tag Crude Oil, eighty-two dollars. It's had a nice run off of that sixty-seven low from four or five weeks ago. So, where should where are you looking at? Where are you talking to your clients about where they should be looking for some opportunities here? Well, it's funny as I was listening to you guys talk about McDonald's, I was thinking not about the quarter pounder or the <laughs> calories, um, but the sixty-seven thousand percent return it has had since nineteen sixty-seven. That's, that's what a, we're talking that's a about. A real number, <clears throat> compounded reinvesting those dividends. McDonald's is the best real estate company yes. that happens to sell. Which I didn't know that until I watched the movie. Now yeah. I got it. Uh, we've owned it for many, many years. And it's interesting. We bought it in the financial crisis at 50. It's now at 300. Wow. And the dividend has increased six times just as the stock has gone up six times. How important are dividends to you just in general? It's what we do. It's and, what you do. And, and okay. it's, it's not just dividends. It's the growth of dividends. So that's why I use McDonald's as an example. But I can't think of a better environment than the one we're in right now where the growth of the income is more important while you also get better stabilized business models. People are too dependent on AI, too dependent on momentum, too dependent on multiple expansion. They're the most vulnerable right now. So it's interesting, I was talking to somebody, an investor yesterday, a uh, large cap growth guy, and he said, we were talking about Goldman Sachs and the other big public investment banks. He doesn't wanna buy them because they, still pay their people as if they were a partnership, right? Every time um, they have a bad year, they say, we got to pay these guys because they're the talent and it's the most important thing. When they have a good year, they're like, we have to pay these guys because they're the talent, that's the most important thing. And they never give money back to the shareholders or not as much as they should for a public company. Do you agree? Well, see, I have a name for him that is the exact same business, but a totally different outcome. It's a little investment bank called Mollis, yeah. the ticker's MC, where all uh, they do is Kenny is Ken Mollis was old vice chair at UBS, started this investment bank. They Banker give up DLJ back in the day. Hundred percent of free cash flow goes back to shareholders as right? dividends. And that's all they are as a deal company, unlike Goldman Sachs, which is a balance sheet company yep. to some degree. They have to maintain capital for especially that fixed income trading. Mollis, more pure advisory. So that's what we're really into. Look, we own Blackstone and Apollo. All we are is getting a piece of the management fees that they're charging. And clients don't seem to mind paying it. The results haven't done anything to keep people from paying it. And so when you own those companies, it's not balance sheet risk. Yes, they pay their people well, but it's very performance driven. I think Wall Street's one of the few meritocratic areas left, to be honest. I see that as a good thing. Well, one of the, one of the things that Goldman Sachs, that David Solomon is doing right now, he's selling you know, their big balance sheet business, the investments they've made in real estate over years because the returns have been volatile. But I was just talking to Sri Natarajan about this. He said one year they'll make six billion on those investments. Next year they'll lose a billion. The next year they'll lose, lose two, but then they'll make six again. So over four years, you know, they've made uh, net positive $9 billion. But since investors are so worried about quarterly or annual uh, reports, they don't care about the longer term picture. Well, I um, am a good investor then because I couldn't care less about quarterly smoothness of those things. <laughs> but with balance sheet businesses, it's not just that it's going to be volatile. You're going to evaporate capital at times. You're going to take on big losses. Dodd-Frank took away their ability to do much of yep. that. Yep. But see, that's not just a good thing because there's less risk. It's a bad thing because there's less upside. Morgan Stanley remedied it by becoming more of a fee-based wealth management business. But we believe that these Blackstones, Apollos, Al Rock, they're able to take huge fees around being an asset manager in a space that has huge growth in front of it. So, David, the importance of dividends to you and your firm and your investment outlook. If I got you in a room with Tim Cook at Apple, what would you say to him? Um, I would be very respectful because how could you not be with someone right. who's created that kind of wealth? And then I would simply point out that the day and age of them saying we can do better with your money is long gone. That there must be 
a greater return of capital to shareholders, that they have proven that for years by holding on to hundreds of billions of dollars. Yep. Uh, they, if they had found better opportunities to deploy it, they would have deployed it. And so by keeping a yield somewhere around half of a percentage point, See? Um, See? I think I it is up. a very, very good opportunity for them to increase return on equity by paying more back to shareholders. In the meantime, they have abundant resources to still go do R&D and, and consumer product expansion. Uh, the great thing to do is find stocks that are misunderstood by the market, right? And uh, Simon Property Group is one you like. When I looked at that, my instant, you know, my brain said, oops, you know, commercial real estate, that must be a bad thing. Um, you think a lot of people make that mistake? I think a lot of people do. And Simon Property is a great example. It was at $50 during COVID. People said no one's ever going to the mall again. Now it's at $125 and people don't realize they have a higher occupancy rate now than they've ever had in the history of the company. Basically about 95% of their square footage across 287 high-end malls is occupied. They bought JCPenney basically for free and are now selling the old JCPenney buildings. Is that right? I didn't know that. I forgot about that. Okay. They, I mean, they paid yeah. something like $500,000 yeah, a that. box when they were selling for <laughs> $20 million a box. And they are selling them to Amazon to be fulfillment warehouses. They're repurposing them into hotels and, and more entertainment-oriented malls. Uh, Simon Property has a ton of unleashed value that will get developed over time. And while you wait, you're getting a 6 to 7% dividend yield that's coming straight from net operating income. And they just have a very well-run balance sheet, about 47% debt to value it's really low and to the extent they've had about five malls that have done poorly out of 287 those were non-recourse they gave them back and the cmbs people had to fight over the assets <laughs> i wonder what uh, i see one of your books um or your most recent book i guess no free there's no free lunch 250 economic truths yeah. Love the title. I was hanging out with Gary Schilling as I was telling these guys yesterday, and he said that's his one main takeaway. There's no free lunch. What do you think about these trillion dollar deficits that we're running? Um, you know, what do you think about the magic money tree that everybody seems to have bought into in government? Does that ever catch up to us? Well, it does, and the question is how it catches up. And so Japan's been at about 230% debt to GDP, and what it's done there is basically 30 years of no economic growth. So we're now at 15 years of 1.6 economic growth. We had had 70 years of over 3% economic growth before that. So the cost so far seems to be a downward trend on growth, uh, a kind of stagnation in the economy. But do I think that there's a moment in which an apocalypse comes? It's very difficult to predict that. My, my real quick comment, though, on the trillion dollar deficits is I don't like it when we spend five trillion during COVID. I don't like it when there's two trillion of spending in the aftermath of financial crisis. But I do understand there's a Keynesian school of thought that believes it's necessary. My problem is during peacetime and during economic expansion time when we're running one to two trillion dollar deficits. And that seems to be accepted by both sides of the aisle. And the only time anyone fights against it is when the other guy is the president. That brings it home. That yeah. brings it home. David, thanks so much for joining us. You can get back to Newport Beach. You, you know, they can't be doing work out there. You know, Pimco <laughs> people, I think it's all smoke and mirrors. I don't know, because it's, maybe it's just too warm outside and you have to spend time in your air-conditioned office. It's too perfect outside. It's maybe. 75 degrees there all the time. So. All the time. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. no, that's, that sounds perfect to me. All right, David. Say, CIO at the Bonson Group. We always appreciate getting a few minutes of his time. Uh, I was just saying to our producer, a unique view on investing. 